My farmland is about four hectares. The land that I farm provides my support. It's the source of food and wealth for me and my children. As the soil was getting poorer, I also became poor. Yes, soil fertility is a big concern in my country because analyses have shown that the fertility of nearly 90% of our soils is now at a low to very low level. We need new ways of management to bring the soil back to life. Land is the very basis of life on Earth. When we talk about land, we talk about natural capital and ecosystem services connected to it. It's soil and rocks, water, plants and animals. The land filters, purifies and stores water, while soil organisms help to break down and recycle dead organic matter. Healthy soil and forests act as carbon sinks of great significance, making them an important factor in the dynamics of climate change and protection. But fertile land is also fragile. While it may take 1,000 years for a centimeter of topsoil to build up, this one centimeter can be washed away by man-made erosion in just a moment's time. The problem of land loss and degradation has not been much in the limelight of public attention, but has become a severe global challenge nevertheless. The importance of the soil for our existence, to ensure that we can eat and drink, is truly outstanding. And given that the world population is growing, it's becoming more and more important for us to preserve soil. This scarce resource that cannot be expanded and try to improve it. As a result of climate change, the devastation, flooding and erosion of soil is becoming an increasingly widespread phenomenon. And in view of this, it's also very clear that we will only be able to feed more people if we treat the soil with care and keep boosting our efforts towards SDG 15.3 to prevent land degradation. Land degradation is caused by several main drivers and it differs from region to region. In industrialized and emerging economies, land degradation often consists of soil sealing and the contamination of groundwater with pesticides and fertilizers. In other places, it is the removal of vegetation cover, either in the form of deforestation or overgrazing, resulting in heavy soil erosion by wind and water and a diminished water capacity of the soil. Improper irrigation techniques can lead to soil salinization, destroying the crops and causing a massive decline in agricultural productivity. In its simplest form, land degradation is the loss of productivity of land, particularly the soil and other factors of land which contribute to the growth of plants. And that can be for agriculture, that can be in nature, it's across the board. If we lose that productivity, we have degraded the land. And if we go too far, we are degrading the livelihoods of those people that live off of that land. Moreover, in today's globalized world, consumption patterns in one country can influence land degradation in other countries. The use of land is often subject to conflicting interests. Environmental conservation may call for a different land use than crop production or infrastructure development. Short-term benefits stand against longer-term considerations. Fighting land degradation is indeed an investment, and a very good one, as scientists are able to show. The International Economics of Land Degradation Initiative, short ELD, is dedicated to demonstrate that it pays off to invest in sustainable land management. We reveal the damage that the loss of fertile lands brings along, which is up to $400 billion a year. And we show options to counteract land degradation through investments. With various studies from partner countries, we can prove that sustainable land management pays off.
For every dollar I invest, I will get five dollars back from harvest and water yields, even more when you include the value of carbon storage. It is cheaper to combat land degradation at an early stage than trying to fix the resulting damages later. There are many technical possibilities to improve the quality of degraded soil. However, these methods are more expensive than protecting the land in the first place. Land Degradation Neutrality, abbreviated LDN, describes a world in which no land is lost to degradation at the bottom line. To achieve this, provident planning is key. The objective is to avoid degradation in the first place. When an intended land use has the potential to degrade the land, measures to avoid and reduce the anticipated degradation are planned and implemented. Partial degradation that cannot totally be avoided is then compensated by restoration and rehabilitation. Ideally, the resulting neutrality brings land use into balance, so that in net terms, any new degradation will be counterbalanced with the reversal of past degradation. Because land degradation neutrality is an ongoing steering mechanism that requires the right mix of actions, a continuous planning, monitoring and adjustment process is needed. The beauty of land degradation neutrality, but also the complexity of it is, if we do that right, if we have the conservation planners, the municipal planners, the urban planners all in the same room, thinking about optimization, then we ought to be able to get the best economic performance, the best environmental positive impacts, the best approach for food security, all in one. Sure, there may be trade-offs and maybe we don't get all we want, but at least we're in a situation where everyone is protected in the long term. Exactly this type of intersectoral process is now implemented in Costa Rica on the basis of a presidential decree from the year 2017. Under the guidance of the National Advisory Commission on Land Degradation, CADETI, representatives from different ministries and their related institutions jointly work to improve their institutional strategies and planning instruments in order to prevent land degradation. The LDN process has started 15 years ago. Since 2004-2005, the results of climate change and land degradation have become increasingly tangible. People have realized how these factors reduce the productivity of the ecosystems. Only after this countrywide problem had been fully acknowledged were we able to introduce the concept of land degradation neutrality through a decree that, on behalf of the public administration, establishes the necessary basis to reach the entire population. LDN is not only relevant for countries that mainly rely on agriculture. Industrialized nations like Germany also need to pay great attention to the issue. On the one hand, it's extremely important that we do our homework at home. The coalition, in its coalition agreement, resolved to reduce soil sealing. At present, this amounts to 65 hectares per day in Germany, the equivalent of one football pitch every 20 minutes. But Germany is also actively committed at an international and especially a multilateral level through the United Nations. The focus here is on the big environmental issues, such as climate mitigation, preserving biodiversity and combating desertification. Beyond land use decisions, sustainable land management practices play an important role. There is a wide spectrum of methods to conserve the vitality of soils, starting with crop rotation and green manure, grazing management, to terracing slopes, ploughing perpendicular to the slope, and many more. 
Measures to restore the fertility of land can range from reforestation to increasing the pH value of the soil by liming. In Benin, located between Nigeria and Togo in Western Africa, the current challenge is to upscale the use of sustainable soil management practices throughout the entire country, as declining fertility of the land poses a great problem to mostly smallholder farmers. Rosalie Jedouan owns a farm close to Abomey in the southern part of Benin, where she grows different crops, mainly for personal consumption, but also to sell them at the local market. The diminishing soil quality is a big concern for her. My name is Rosalie. I am 53 years old. I am from Akbanizon, but I live in Kinta Gabadumau village. When I sow my maize, and I sow the quantity that I used to sow before, it does not yield the same amounts as before. I was afraid, if I don't have anything to eat, how can I live? And I started asking myself what I could do. Firma Amaji is an expert for sustainable soil management and works as a consultant to many organizations in Benin. He knows the problems of farmers like Rosalie Jedouin firsthand and what it takes to address the challenges. Oui. Due to the growing population and the land that is not getting bigger, fallow periods that used to last 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, have become very short these days and only last one to two years. So problem number one, the natural restoration of soil fertility is no longer happening. When the soil loses its organic vitality and you bring in fertilizers, you will just be wasting your money. The teaching in our universities and in agricultural colleges does not cover enough soil fertility restoration techniques adequate to the current conditions and the farmer's resources. So we train technicians who in turn provide advisory support to farmers. We coach them to ensure that the measures are well implemented in the fields. What has changed in the way I work the land? I use soil improvers, like mucuna. I apply crop rotation, like growing maize, followed by beans. I stopped burning. I won't cut down trees anymore. I build fences surrounding my fields to keep out roaming cattle. Techniques to control land degradation don't immediately bear fruit. However, generally, even after only a few years, very tangible improvements can be seen. I'm really optimistic about the future now. I'm really happy and I think that all those changes will last over time. That's why I won't stop using the new techniques and knowledge that I got. I will teach them to my fellow farmers and urge them not to stop. The long-term success depends on the political will to enforce LDN through coordination between institutions as it is done in Costa Rica and on the commitment of people like Fama Amaji and Rosalie Jedouin who make the difference by changing land use patterns practically on the ground. What land degradation neutrality has taught us in less than two years is that land is the key to the solution. It's the place where if we make very good decisions in a collaborative way, we can actually achieve all we want in terms of the environment. And that includes biodiversity, climate change adaptation, even climate change mitigation. A lot of the solutions are going to be in the vegetation and the soil that we walk on. On behalf of future generations, all involved parties need to combine their efforts to preserve the land. There will always be conflicts of interest, but with the concept of land degradation neutrality, we have a mechanism to come up with intelligent solutions serving the very basis of our life, one step at a time. <laughs>